Test, test, test. Good evening, man. Ed, we're gearing up for your spiritual update. I'm listening to uh, a little Panzer. I am the monster under your bed, Shakti. I am the monster under your bed. Test, test, test. Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, and beyond. We're getting ready to go live, live, live in three minutes. What song are we going to start with? Love Child. Love Child. Love Child. <laughs> love Child. Love Child. Tenement Slam. Love Child. Ooh. Ah. For you is real love. Madonna, no. Pitbull, shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay. Pitbull in the house. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay. All right, you'd never know this was a spiritual show. Spring has sprung, bros. Love to make love to you, baby. Make love to me. All right. Let's get in the right frame of mind. One minute and counting. Let's just make sure we go live. Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, and beyond. And all the way to the bottom here. We're going down, down, down. Spirit Channel, Channel 3. Okay, shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay. No way, Jose. I'm in Mali. All right. And that's it for the pit bull roof riff. My name's Kirk, and this is my spiritual, supernatural, mystical, and magical TV show. And this is your spiritual update. The tape is taping. The mic is miking. And we're re hey, hey, ho, and away we go. And we're live. Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, and beyond. My name is Kirk Kerber, and this is my spiritual, supernatural, mystical, and magical TV show. And I'm here every Monday night, 11.30 p.m., live from New York City out of Studio 4 on the west side. And what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? Let me make double, triple sure that the sound is working. We're not too hot. We have like a... There we go. My name is Kirk the sound Kirk. is good. And it's all a go, like Willy Wonka. Okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to watch? What are we going to talk about? Uh, if you'd like to know more about what I do, I'm a shamanic practitioner and healer, initiated shaman. I'm also a natural born trance medium and spiritual advisor to clients around the world. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. And, uh,. Take a deep yoga breath, shocked in the maste, restore the flow, and get rid of the stagnation, shakti, right now. Okay, uh, we got some stuff, so I'm not going to show you my social media. You just type in Kirk Kerber or Kirk Spiritual Shaman, New York City, Manhattan, and you will find me. Okay, let me see here. Uh, you want to type in Kirk Kerber, Shaman Extraordinaire in New York City, and you'll get my website, and you'll get lots of pictures of me as well, and uh, you'll get lots of links. So, if you need spiritual advisement, I'm your guy, and I will utilize and use my spiritual gifts to your behalf, and... Uh, from all over the world and I have over 25 years experience assisting my clients with a variety of modalities it's true it's true uh, I've had five near-death experiences and I'm also been in recovery 
from drug, alcohol, and codependency issues, among other things, across different fellowships. And uh, here we are. So, take a deep yoga breath. What are we going to show you today? We're just going to show videos. Uh, let's see. Let's start you off with a little meditation here. And I actually use this. Uh, wow, that looks righteous. Look at those graphics. I actually used this video today in my morning meditation. I want to pass it along to you. And it's remove subconscious negative blocks. Here we go. Look at that. That is freaking beautiful. And we're going to play some of this and get rid of some of your blocks. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and remove those blocks. You could just listen to that all night, all, all night. Take a deep yoga breath. Come into the present time, okay? Collect your energy into this dimension, and your affirmation is, I am here, and my mind is clear. Shakti. Okay, so, it's a spiritual update. And uh, I don't know, let's see, we've got codependency for beginners, what is the golden shadow, and embracing the dark shadow. So what do you guys want to hear tonight? Uh, why don't we go with, what is the golden shadow? Let's try that one, okay? Does anybody know? Uh, I think my clients have more problems with the golden shadow than any other thing. And this little well-produced video is going to give you a basic idea. And if you want to, you can't, when you have a problem embracing the golden shadow, you can't step into your light. And, uh, you know, it is hard. It feels like you're being burned, especially if you had a narcissistic, sociopathic parent. Uh, the parent will always steal the child's light. It will try to weaken the child. Anytime the child tries to exhibit spiritual or supernatural or artistic or musical creative gifts, the parent will just squash it. And so what happens is the child learns to hide their light. So having that in mind, let's check this out. It's called, What is the Golden Shadow? 
The golden shadow, sometimes called the positive shadow, is made up of our hidden talents, unseen potential. Just as we hide our shame, our fear and our trauma from others, don't we also sometimes hide our light? For many people, it's far more threatening to their sense of self to acknowledge their divine light than it is to share their darkness. The golden shadow is found in the answers to questions like, when do I feel most alive? If I didn't have to work for a living, how would I spend my life? What do I want to be when I grow up? And where is my greatest light? If the dark shadow is like the cellar of our unseen shame, then the golden shadow is like the attic of our unclaimed valuables. It makes sense why we might want to hide our dark shadow from others, but why would we hide our gold? Perhaps there's someone watching this, and in fact I know there is, who hides their esoteric side from their friends or family for fear of being labelled too woo-woo. If that's you, then your golden shadow will most definitely contain your esoteric spiritual power. Perhaps there's someone else watching this who loves to dance, but when they were a child they were told by their parents that dancing's not for you or you can't do it. Perhaps for that person, when they learn to integrate the golden shadow, they will also be integrating their inner dancer. Our hidden talents, our divine power and our blinding beauty, these are the things that lie in our golden shadow. Many of us hold on to the unconscious assumption that sharing our gold with others might lead to jealousy, suspicion or rejection if fully revealed. And so we go through life hiding our gold as much as we hide our darkness. And yet, as Marion Williamson famously said, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others don't feel insecure around you. You are meant to shine as children do. Golden shadow integration is about allowing yourself to shine. Although we use the terms dark and golden when referring to the shadow, in fact, they're two faces of the same coin. It's only our societal belief systems or individual preference that makes us label something dark or golden shadow material. For example, let's take vivacious individuality. In some cultures in the world, this is most definitely a golden shadow potential. It's something we think people should display more of and be more of their authentic selves. And yet, in other cultures, vivacious individuality is something that's seen as a dark shadow, something that we really should suppress because it might be harmful to express it too much. My point is, what makes something dark or golden shadow material is totally individual, based on our society, our upbringing and our personal preference. Okay, the golden shadow. What do you guys think? You want to hear about the dark shadow now? I like that guy. I don't know who he is, but I'd like to thank him for making a well-produced video. Okay, embracing the shadow. And I don't know who this guy is. I just found him this afternoon. Uh, but he gives courses, Charlie Morley. So check out Charlie Morley because he's uh, he's happening with the shadows Eat over into here. into the dazzling darkness of your shadow <laughs> side. He's definitely with happening with the shadow and effective techniques which will allow you to transform the energy of your shadow into the power of psychological growth. The shadow is made up of all the parts of ourselves that we hide from others. Our fear, our shame, our wounds, but also our hidden talents, our hidden light and our untapped potential. Shadow work is not about indulging the shadow or acting out the shadow. It's about embracing the shadow, knowing that the embrace of love is all that we need to transform the shadow into the gold of spiritual growth. Shadow work moves us into the deep authenticity of who we truly are. The shadow has been described as the dark side of the human psyche, but not dark meaning bad, dark meaning yet to be illuminated. And if you can have the courage to shine light into those areas of both your life and your mind that are yet to be illuminated, you will find more gold there than you had ever dreamt possible. This course will show you how to fearlessly embrace your shadow side with compassionate acceptance and so manifest the power of your full awakened potential. 
using practical how-to exercises sourced from Western psychology, Tibetan Buddhism and even shamanic mask work, you'll be guided on a transformational journey to self-discovery. We'll embrace the benefits of shadow integration, including increased energy, radical authenticity and spiritual growth. We'll explore the different types of shadow, including the golden shadow, the ancestral shadow and the sexual shadow. We'll learn a series of exercises, visualizations, guided meditations and dream work practices, which will allow us to connect deeply with and to transform our shadow. Using exercises sourced from mindfulness meditation, Tibetan Buddhist spiritual practice, lucid dreaming, shamanic mask and mirror practice, eye gazing, creative writing and loads more. In this course we'll learn how to meet, befriend and transform the shadow. We'll explore how to unlock your hidden potential, how to make friends with fear of death, how to transform your projections and how to befriend all wow. of who you truly okay. are. Okay, I'm in. Anytime you I'm choose totally love over fear, you integrate the shadow. Shadow work is about becoming more authentic, more vulnerable and yet more empowered. And this course will provide everything you need to move towards the places that scare you with love. He's got great visuals too, right? Shocky! We're going to move you into the place of love, integrating your shadow. Okay. If you've never heard of shadow work, you have now. Okay, my name's Kirk and this is my spiritual, supernatural, mystical, magical, metaphysical Monday night show. Show, show, show. Because the show must go on. And uh, then the show must go on for 15 years and counting. And I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And uh, my videos are on, let me see, YouTube, Daily Motion, and Internet Archive. Shakti Namaste. There's over 300 hours of me answering questions about so, supra metaphysics or supernatural metaphysics, quantum mechanics, and just about anything else. If it's spiritual, I'm talking about it. And it's all over the web, and there's over 300 hours. So, there you go. Check me out. And I do see people in person. If you want to talk to me in person, you just hit me up at kirkspiritual.com. And uh, we'll have a chat. Codependency for beginners. Let's try codependency now. How would you describe codependency? Psychobabble. Huh? The word means so many different things to different people that it really means nothing at all. But everybody knows about codependent relationships. So what? What? Yes, it means that you get totally meshed with someone else. I thought you knew you were the counsellor. Well, maybe I'm codependent because my wife is the centre of my world. No, it means that you don't know. Probably because you... Then what? Then you grew up to become an actor. Yes, so all you have to do in order to make sure that you break the chain of multi-generational shame is to treat your children with love and kindness. Ah, so yes, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Love is wonderful. But it doesn't work in preventing addiction. That's very cynical. Across to psychopathy. In an addictive family. And that made you codependent. So that you then became so good. No, that's the whole point. We learn how to become less codependent by rejecting all the abuse and abandonment that we suffer. Love and become codependent and become addicts. So it's all the fault of parents. No, you see, they were codependent themselves from their parents and the grandparents may have so it's nobody's fault really it's just the way it is 
but we can put a stop to it now so that the next generation doesn't become codependent. And then they won't grow up to become Thirty years ago, when I first when the next generation grew up to be addicts just the same. Well, you can be codependent with an addict. That's the effect of living with an addict can have on you. So we all finish up codependent in one way or another. No, as I said, we can break the chain. How? By learning not to be codependent. We learn to speak our truth and be we don't blame our parents or partners. It's not their fault that they were addicts of one kind or another. I understand. We're not to blame for anything if we admit that we're codependent and then stop abusing and abandoning other people. That's right. And we learn not to make codependent relationships. How? By not... Not to me, it isn't. It seems to me the codependency means so that they can avoid taking responsibility. Yeah, yeah, uh... Not at all. We have to accept our codependency before we can be healed of it, one day at a time. So it's just like any other addiction in that I respect. don't really know... Well, well not uh, really. It's not our... F I'm not really sure if that video is an actual joke. Or it just speaks volumes to uh, that people say codependent and they throw the term around constantly and like nobody really is sure what the indicators are. I wonder if we do codependent indicators. Let's try this here. Let's do a little search together. Uh, you've got codependent TED Talks. How about codependent indicators? Because, you know, nobody really knows. Maybe that's my next video. Narcissists in the Codependent Dance. Uh, eight indicators of narcissism. Like, there really isn't anything that says codependent relationships when they become everything. I don't know. What is codependency? You want to try this? Uh, strategies. Like, everybody's got a different idea about it let's see what this one says what is codependency oh my gosh I gotta admit I vacillate a little bit on this uh, believing in this universal consciousness and that we are all one and interconnected how do we not be codependent I have I confess this thing has owned me so much of my life. I don't understand many times where I end and someone else begins and it just, how is it that I become enmeshed in these relationships and no doubt my own healing journey has uh, chased me back deck to childhood where uh, I learned some of those things and some of those patterns and so I've healed from a lot of that but what is codependency and and so I've just done a lot of work and a lot of studying here and it's very emotional for me to talk about because um, it's both brought me into beautiful relationships uh, this this energy this this connection this passion that I have inside but uh, the codependency of it um, has caused a derailment and it's just I think the codependency is the space where where you don't know where you end and they begin and and you know the, my famous character Jerry Maguire said you complete me and you know women swooned and guys kind of went really that's what I need to say and so they did they said that to their girls on bended knee with rose in hand and apparently just wasn't as cool when they said it as when Tom Cruise said it and it's so we're all just kind of going, oh, we got to be independent and we've got to, you know, push away from each other and um, we lack the intimacy in many ways. And so the subject is confusing. I don't, I don't have answers. I have a lot of experience with it, many of it not good. And so I talk about these things and in, in, in understanding, you know, can we parent ourselves? Can we meet our own needs? Can we? 
can we survive in that space where we need nothing from anybody else? Like we can meet all our own needs. Is that possible in this world of connectedness and as beings that are just designed and created to just be be together and 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 we look at each other and say, "Don't leave me," you know, "Be here with me forever." And ah, uh, codependency. I. I wish I had more. I'm going to keep talking about this thing because it has owned me in my own life. Okay, so healing all right. He's a nice guy. He's a handsome yeah. guy. Uh, he's got a beautiful background, and so we still don't it, it, really know any more about codependency. Um, so I don't want to derail anybody's good time. But breaking up with codependency, uh, codependent core of toxic relationships. So I don't know. I mean, a key skill for codependent recovery. Uh, I think I'm just putting it out there that nobody really particularly knows what the hell it means. You know, it's like you kind of toss it out there when you're like, uh, hmm, you're being codependent with me. Or, you know, I got to lay my boundaries. Um, so I don't really know what any of all that means either. I mean... I've never been married, and how to overcome it forever. I don't know. Let's check this guy out, and then we're going to have to go. Uh, okay. Uh, it's interesting that it's guys. It's like most of the like videos physical? are most what, of the, the videos root, are guys, not, not women. Codependency, also known as pathological loneliness, really is. Because on the Internet, I see so many videos analyzing, blaming or labeling the narcissist and how we can protect ourselves against these other people or how to recover from them and their actions. But I've experienced myself that watching these videos with believed solutions didn't solve the actual problem at all. Not even leaving manipulative people will solve the root. Because it's most likely we will start a new, but a similar kind of relationship afterwards. And this is because the root of the problem hasn't been solved within ourselves yet. Now, by watching this video, this is about to change for you. Only when we know what the real root cause is, we can heal the root and therefore automatically liberate ourselves from every other victim symptom too such as staying in the role of being a victim, feeling powerless, dependent, can't stop pleasing others, uh, letting ourselves being manipulated, by not staying true to our yeses and our noes and letting other people control us, we experience the feeling of being tired or even exhausted. And some of us stay within the role of being emotionally and even physically abused and finding ourselves living in a dark world where we are being dominated and finding ourselves being trapped in mind games. From the moment we know what the real root of the problem is, we will be able to stop being codependent completely and for once and for all. You don't have to feel ashamed for the fact that you are still codependent because we all encounter this somewhere in our lives. Before we choose to start healing the root cause. Now, the only difference might be that some people might be better in hiding the fact that they are codependent behind a shiny mask in society until that mask cracks, obviously. Being codependent comes down to one thing. Did fear ever cross your mind? Fear that we will be abandoned while being our true selves. All right. We're going to have to talk about this next week. Do you week. know why we are so afraid to be abandoned? Oh, man. It was just getting good, too. Ourselves? All right, guys. When we are guys left and alone, ladies. there wouldn't be any distractions left from our own unsolved pain that we do not want to feel. Okay, so basically we attract a narcissist to suck the life out of us so we don't have to feel our own core of shame and pain. I think that's, this guy was really good. 
this is called the Live Academy, the profile. So, uh, we will pick it up next week. Thank you for watching, and we will take you out with one of my favorite singers, Laverne Baker with Tweedly D. Tweedly D, Tweedly Dumb. Happy spring, everybody. I'll see you next week in the Cyber Temple of Unconditional Love. Shakti Namaste. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. You make my heart go clickety-clack.